So the next steps are optional. We will only do them if we need temperature and CO2 control. So if you don't need those steps, uh, you can skip uh, this part of the video. So first, if we are doing that, we need to turn the knob on the CO2 tank to open. The CO2 tank is in this corner. This is the knob. We can turn it to open. Don't worry if this is not immediately going up to something like 500 or a few hundred PSI. Um, it takes time for this needle to go up. As long as this one uh, uh, jumped up, you're fine. So step 17, ensure sample feedback is off, lens power is off, and mixed gas, gas power is on. So that refers to this high hit uh, controller, which is here. So we want sample feedback, put this here, so I can read it. So sample feedback off, lens power off, mixed gas power on. Sample feedback off, lens power off, mixed gas power on. The next step is to turn on the Takai hit controller. Power button is here. The next step is to very carefully fill the moat with 10 milliliters of distilled water. So the moat is this thing here. And the idea is that we are going to fill that with 10 milliliters of water. Uh, and the CO2 is going to come in uh, through here. And because it will go into this chamber that has this water, it will be humidified um, before it reaches the cells, which will be here. And there will be a lid that will cover all of this. So um, to make sure that we don't add too much water, we have a syringe here. So you can pour some distilled water into this beaker. We have distilled water here. Pick it up with the syringe and then very carefully place it in that moat. I've just filled the syringe with approximately 10 milliliters of water. Note that I've left at the tip, now it's a little bit tw tilted, but I've left a little bubble so that I didn't have water dripping out of here because uh, the main thing we want to avoid is having water get all over the microscope. Uh, so now I'm going to very gently and carefully place water uh, in this moat. And you can see that it's not all uh, easily connected to each other. lifted up at times and this is easier to do if you're not filming it so uh, just be careful when you do it and if you spill anything just grab a Kim wipe and wipe it down there we go all right so we filled the moat with 10 milliliters of water the next step, step 20, is to put the lid on the sample. So uh, this won't apply to us now, but I'll show you the idea here, which is when you're doing, uh, when you're using a live sample, uh, we're going to place the sample on. Uh, it could be, for example, a NUNC uh, 2 chambered cover glass. It could be a 35 millimeter dish. In either case, when we do this, we're going to remove the plastic cover of that sample and then put on a special um, cover that is compatible with this. So I'll show you where those covers are. They're down here in this sort of rack. Um, and You can see this one is for NUNC chambers. This one is for 35 millimeter dishes. Since we have the holder for the NUNC chambers on, let me show you how to put this one on. So you can see it has 
some magnets and those magnets align with some magnets on the holder itself and that locks it into place. And when you have a sample, this will push down on it and hold it. Similarly, just remove this for a moment. For the 35 millimeter one, these magnets will lock it into place there. Okay, so this is obviously sample dependent, but the idea, uh, the important idea here is you need to have a sample of the uh, proper configuration and match it with the lid. And you don't want to use your plastic lid because that will uh, make bright field imaging uh, worse. So it's better to use uh, those lids, which will additionally, because they have the magnets, they will help secure the sample into position. So once we've done that, which in this case we can't because I don't have a test uh, sample, we're going to put the lid on the Takai hit insert. So um, for this to be able to control CO2 and temperature, you need to put this lid on it. So I'll do that here. Fits nicely. You can see that the cable for the lid is hanging on this to remove tension from the scope. So the next step is to set the top heater and stage heater parameters. If you have one 35 millimeter dish or a chamber cover glass, use the dish settings. If you have six by 35 millimeter dishes or a multi-well plate, use the well settings. So the six by 35 millimeter dishes refers to this holder. Um, that's not what we have. We have a single, in this case, chambered slide one. So we need to set uh, the parameters correctly here. Those parameters are in a small table on top. And so it says top, for example, for dish, which is what we need right now, the top has to be at 46, the stage at 38. So the top should be at 46. And the stage should be at 38. If we wanted to change it, we could use these buttons here to change as needed, okay? Um, since we don't, we're gonna leave this alone. Finally, if you need to use the temperature feedback mode, lens heating, or temperature recording, please consult with us. So temperature feedback, you can actually put a thermometer in your sample and make sure that the temperature in the sample is whatever you want. Lens heating is to have even more precise temperature control, and temperature recording means exactly what it sounds like. If you need to record the temperature as you're doing the experiment, there are ways of doing that. Uh, they add complications, so if you need to do those things, please consult with me and I'll be happy to help you set those up.